Kingfisher is a tool that we use to run social engineering campaigns internally. We, of course, work at Secure State Consulting, and so we have a bunch of clients with a bunch of different phishing needs. Some of them want to just train users, some of them want us to attack users, some of us want to attack users and turn the computers off. So we get all kinds of crazy, crazy requests. And so we needed a tool that is very, very flexible that allows us to run campaigns to do whatever we need, pretty much. And this is, this is what we came up with, and we think it's uh, useful to the community. So we hope you guys think so, too. So a uh, little bit of background. The Verizon data breach report that everybody loves, the most recent one had mentioned that phishing attacks are still on the rise. So this is sort of driving corporate need to ensure that their users are being properly trained and that they're made aware of these types of social engineering attacks. So this is sort of driving the need for what we offer. So. Uh, it's a platform for running phishing campaigns. It's a, it's a server that uh, integrates in all of the reporting and it has, it serves up the content, sends the emails, it correlates all that together. It's meant for a massive campaign, so multiple users. There's a lot of excellent tools out there that will just do spear phishing where it sends like one or two target emails. That doesn't really work for us because we run campaigns of anywhere between, what Brandon, like 10 targets to 500. Yeah right around there, so we need to be able to send a lot of emails very efficiently. So it's open source, we really like open source. It's BSD licensed, it's on uh, Secure State's GitHub page. The URL to that will be at the very end, so. All right, so um, we're sort of running through this really quickly because we have a lot of content, but we really want to get to the demo because demos are the best time because you don't really want to see slides, you want to see the actual tool and what, what it can do, I hope. I know that's what I always come to these presentations for. So uh, on the server, uh, works on, uh, Ubuntu and Kali very well. Everybody likes Kali, so a lot of uh, pen testers out there are using Kali, so we make sure that works on that. So uh, basically, it's also very lightweight. We don't want something that we have to spend a bunch of time configuring. We want to be able to throw it up, take it down. So very easy to use. And so it has a uh, client and server model so that the server is always constantly running, but the client is where you actually do all of your work from sending the emails, generating the reports, and things like that, which allows us to have a high degree of control over how the emails are actually being sent. We know when they're going through and all that. We've had a lot of experience with web-based tools that they'll tell you that the emails were sent and they, they lie. The emails never been sent and they're kind of flaky and so we want it to be very very reliable that's kind of our number one goal is we need to know that when it says the email sent it was sent so all right so um we'll talk about uh, types of campaigns so these are the three primary types of campaigns that we see from our clients basically they are uh, they are broken out into what the end result is of course every campaign pretty much starts out with an email being sent A uh, training page that shows basically this was a phishing attempt and you did bad by clicking this don't do it again slap on the wrist so static web content pretty simple here in a second, sorry. excellent um, next one up is uh, credential harvesting so this one when we do uh, penetration testing we actually want to break in what we do a lot of times or what Brandan will do is Brandan will set up a site that looks just like the uh, clients either a VPN portal, email portal, or their form-based login that entices the user to log in. We'll tell them that it is a newer version that they need to upgrade their system, and they put in their username and password, and that gets sent to us, and we log it. And after that, it can go to training or whatnot. It really depends on how the user or how the client wants it to be configured. And then uh, last by is probably the most fun, and you can't see our slides. Yes, I know. <laughs> so I'm going to describe it to you. There is a beautiful window with a Windows user account control dialog that pops up. And basically, this is everybody's favorite drive-by attack. So when the user visits this uh, malicious page, it's going to try to either exploit their system using some fabled zero day, or it's going to present them with probably what's more likely is something more reliable, such as an Excel document or an executable that simply says, this is the new VPN client, please install it, something along the lines of that. But basically, this type of an attack is actually trying to attack the client and get access to their system by trying to get them to execute something. I'm so, to go to computer source one, it's Refusing to go to computer source one. So you might know how to get the same thing. Get MWR built to computer source one. Sorry about this, but I'm trying to get it all reported. It's okay. How do you get it? It was already worked. And, and now it wasn't so specific. It's not going to be here. 
Okay, how do we get? Oh. It's source one. Oh. I chose the source and it's not honoring what I told it to do. Actually, you know what? I know what I did. Uh -huh. Aha! Yeah. All right, and so with that, I'm going to pass it over to Brandon, who's going to talk about tips for using Kingfisher. Okay, so um, one of the things that makes Kingfisher different than uh, some of the other fishing tools out there, um, it has something built in we like to call variables, but um, there's different variables that you can use within the email that you're sending out and uh, within the fishing website. So these are just um, a few of the common ones that I use when I'm doing uh, fishing assessments, but you can basically make a template that has um, the person's first name and last name, so you can customize it. So when you send out the, uh, when you have the target list, you can actually put it in a CSV format to have first name, comma, last name, comma, email address, and it'll push that email or it'll push that first and last name into the actual email that's being sent. Um, second thing is company name. So later on, when we do the demo, um, there's a option to put in the name of the company. That'll actually put it right into the email. Um, the phishing link, so basically what the user is going to be clicking on. Um, once again, within the Kingfisher client, um, you can specify that and it'll put that right into the HTML email for you. And then um, the tracking dot option, so basically this variable down there at the bottom, um, you can just put that at the very bottom of the email you're sending out. It's a one by one uh, transparent JPEG or a GIF. GIF image that. Uh, um, basically, it's hosted on the Kingfisher server, so if a user opens the email on their phone, something that automatically loads um, images, or if they open it in Outlook and it's automatically configured to load images, or they say load images, um, it'll call back to Kingfisher to try to get that uh, little GIF, and it'll say, okay, well, at least the user opened the email, so you know if your emails are getting through or not, and who actually viewed them. It allows us to track which users are getting the emails, but not clicking the links. About December of last year, Gmail announced this brand new feature that they were releasing to combat spammers and fishers because when they send you an email, there's an image in there that when it loads up, they know you got the email. This is that technique. So this is that technique that Gmail is purposely trying to combat. Right. Um, there's also quite a few website variables. So this is actually the website that the user is going to. So with your HTML that you're hosting, um, on your Kingfisher server, you can actually put in the uh, time variable, which is broken out here, but it'll actually display, you can have it display yesterday, or the previous day, or a future day, or the current time. So you can just basically customize what fishing page they're landing on, um, also as well as the company name. We like to tell people that they sh this should have been done yesterday, try to get them to fill out the form. Or then also with company messages. So um, another feature within Kingfisher, um, you can actually check the option within the configuration to deny request after cr credential submission. So if you check this, um, a user goes to your phishing website, they enter their credentials, um, then they're taken to a page that says, thank you for registering, let's just say that. Um, Kingfisher can actually track that and then uh, if they try to revisit the initial page where they enter their credentials, you can have um, either a 404 or a different page displayed. So say you've already submitted your credentials or um, 404 request denied. What we see a lot of times on our assessments is that the users are smart enough to know that once they've submitted their credentials that the following page is what actually tips them off, that that was bad, that oh no, they did something wrong. And they'll end up forwarding the email onto IT security and IT security doing what they do, being curious. They click the link to see you know, what the fuss is all about. And so we can redirect them to a 404. So IT is gonna look at them like they're crazy because there's nothing there. So this is sort of a small anti-forensics feature that we have built in just to sort of prolong the life of our campaigns. Exactly, and um, through the phishing campaigns we've done, essentially the first, at the very most half hour is when we get the most actual clicks. Anything past that, if um, IT security isn't notified and they don't have some type of blocking rule on their network to actually deny 
users from going to our IP address or our website, um, it kind of weans off there a little bit. So early on, that's the most um, important part of the fish. You get the most clicks. Uh, another option is message importance. So you can specify uh, how important you want your message to be. So in Outlook especially, I know, um, you'll get an email that says high importance. It has the red exclamation point. Um, you can set that or you can set it to medium or low. So you can augment that to your email pretext saying, um, sending out an email saying read this immediately or I need this done by the end of the day if you mark it as high. It just kind of adds to the legitimacy of your email. Um, this is another cool thing with campaign privacy. So uh, we do, sometimes we do multiple phishing campaigns for multiple clients at the same time. Uh, while building this tool, we wanted to make sure that two different clients or two different companies, if we were running a simultaneous campaign, wouldn't accidentally be able to get to the other client's phishing page. We try to customize. Um, our phishing websites, so it'll have the company name in there, it'll have custom logos. So basically you're trying to keep both campaigns private. Um, within Kingfisher, when it sends out the email, um, it'll send a unique ID in the URL, which Kingfisher keeps track of. So when the user clicks on it, they can only visit their specific company page. If they try to navigate to, or even try to durbuster or brute force, um, the URL uh, is, if they don't have that unique ID, they won't be able to view the other company's page. Uh, this is another thing built in, uh, kind of goes along with the variables, but if you put this uh, script tag up here, if client is trained, and if you can actually do a meta refresh to uh, a different page, so it's kind of going along the same thing with if credentials are submitted, show a 404 page. This is um, if trained, so if we're just doing the low level, um, seeing if a user will click a link in their email and then they're redirected to an education page saying you've been fished, this is why it's bad, these are the steps you can take next time so you won't get fished. Um, if they do that once, Kingfisher tracks it. If they try to visit that website URL again, it'll show a different page um, saying, okay, you've already been trained, um, move on with your day. We can tell if users have been trained if they submitted credentials, which allows us to sort of create workflows to try to herd the users through a progression of pages. Um, this is actually one of my favorite features in it. It has um, SMS alerting. So um, you can enable this as an option, um, set your cell phone number and your carrier. And Kingfisher has it set up where it's, what's it, one, five? Every, every few emails. Every few, one, five, 15, and then it goes like from 50 on there. It will send a um, text message to your phone or whatever number that you specify in there saying this many visits to your page for this campaign or this many credentials have been submitted. So essentially you can um, set all this up, send out your campaign, go to lunch, and you can actually see how your campaign is doing saying, okay, well, I've gotten 50 credentials so far. It's going really good. Um, one of the last things, Beef integration, so um, the browser exploitation framework. Uh, this is still a work in progress. We're just starting to use it, but this kind of goes along with the drive-by attacks. Um, but Kingfisher has it currently implemented. But if you go into the settings, you can actually um, supply the beef hook. If you have beef running on the server, and then put this script into the um, header of the website, uh, it'll automatically hook the visiting users. So um, you can actually run a auto run script more purpose towards beef after the fact. But basically this, this automatically hooks clients when they visit the page. So the old adage, even if you don't submit credentials, just clicking the link is bad enough. Just visiting the website, you're hooked from there. So you can kind of format that education for phishing campaigns. We can load arbitrary JavaScripts remotely, like on the fly, as part of this, which is pretty nice. So in this situation, we're loading the beef hook into any page that the users are visiting, which allows us to do further things on from there. Because beef is a fantastic tool for attacking clients, and so we want to integrate that into ours. Okay, so demo time. Is everybody's favorite part, right? The demo. Yeah. All right. Everybody's tired. Okay, so um, right here I have a box set up with the Kingfisher 
client and server in a VM, you don't have to have the client and server set up on the same machine. You can have the server set up on a totally different machine. It'll SSH in, um, the client will SSH into the server. So I already have it up. Now this is the main interface of um, Kingfisher. So when you first go to start a campaign, you have the website URL. So this is where you specify it. Um, this will also pull into that dynamic variable for um, the phishing link. So it'll put it right in there for you. Um, this is where you specify the company name. So that'll pull it in from the variable too. Um, this is where you set the source email. Then the friendly alias, so what it actually shows up as when it comes into the inbox. Uh, the subject line, the reply to. Down here is where you actually supply the um, HTML email message. So you can select file and then just go to wherever your HTML is, open that up. Um, and then here is the target list. So So this is just uh, the format that it takes a target list in. It's CSV, so first name, last name, email address. You don't need to supply the first name or last name um, if you don't want to or you don't have it. In that case, it would just be comma, comma, and then email address. Uh, Kingfish also has the ability to attach a file, so um, a malicious Excel or Word document that has a macro in it, you can select that and it'll send it just fine. Here's the interface to actually um, select the message importance and the message sensitivity. Um, once you load the HTML email through this interface, you can actually go into the edit tab and you can see the HTML right here um, and edit it on the fly. So you guys might be able to see it, but um, here's the company name variable. Um, first name variable is up here at the top, and then all the way at the bottom, tracking dot variable. So we have a, a small set of templates that are actually included with Kingfish that have all these set up so that way you can see them sort of build up and customize off of the ones that are existing so you have working examples. We're working on building that out to adding in more content for more templates for different situations. So even though you loaded the HTML um, file, you can actually change it too. So if you notice a misspelling or you just don't want to edit it manually, you can just go in, change it, um, hit save. It'll ask you, sure you want to save it? Yes. And then you can actually preview it. And this is um, like a real-time preview essentially. So any changes you make here, as long as you save it, you go over to the preview tab and it'll show you what um, it looks like with the variables filled in. So this is the default um, name for the variable when it's showing it. But if it says secure state here for the company name, which pulls from right there. Um, and then the tracking dot image, you won't be able to see it down there, but it's there. So basically you can see your email before you send it. Um, right here is actually when you go to send the message. Now this is a previous campaign um, that I was testing for basically. So if you want to send, you just hit start. It'll pop this up, um, ask you to verify your credentials again, so the credentials to SSH into the server. Hit connect. And then it says sending email one of one, so that's from the target email file. Um, if you have more, it'll obviously go down and say, okay, well, successfully sent one email. Um, going through here, just, actually we'll go over here to the campaign. So, over in the campaign, um, like I said, I was doing testing with this, so there's actually um, information filled in. This is kind of the visual um, user interface. It'll refresh every couple minutes, I think five or 10 minutes automatically to pull back data, or you can actually refresh down here manually to refresh the data, but it'll show, okay, messages, total 41 cent, um, how many visits to the page in total, how many unique visits, how many credentials have been submitted, and how many unique credentials. Okay. Um, down here is visits over time. So this is where we actually get the statistics for, okay, within the first 30 minutes at the most, we get the most credentials and users clicking on it, and then it kind of weans off from there. When we're running large campaigns, we definitely see a curve with that. It'll shoot off in the first 30 minutes or so, and then it usually levels out. Right. Um, it also will do uh, visitor OS version information detection. 
So from the user agent, so you can actually tell, okay, well this person clicked from their phone, this one did it from their actual desktop. That's really useful because we have a lot of clients that want that information because they want to know if their corporate email is being accessed from unauthorized devices. Sometimes uh, some clients will have policies saying your personal phone isn't supposed to access the corporate email or whatnot or all only corporate phones that are all Blackberry. So if there's an iPhone that shows up in there, you know that the user's doing something they shouldn't be doing or we'll find out of date versions of Windows and things like that in there. So that information is just useful for the client to know. Right. So over here, um, this is the visual kind of dashboard. It's easy to see everything that's going on. Um, if you go into the Messages tab, it'll actually show all the emails that have been sent, um, if they've been opened, so either if the user visited the page or if they loaded images or even just opened it on their phone, loaded that tracking dot image, um, it'll show up there. If there's a training uh, type page, it'll show up there. Uh, over in the Visits column, or the Visits tab, it'll actually show who actually visited, um, what IP they visited from, their uh, user agent, and then the number of times they visit. So if they visited multiple times, uh, the time of their first visit and the time of their last visit. So you can kind of correlate um, who's actually visiting the, the page. Interestingly enough, also when we're doing um, phishing campaigns, we'll see sometimes multiple visits from the same email address. And sometimes the IPs are different, sometimes they're not. Basically then you can tell, okay, well this person forwarded it on to someone, whether it was the person right beside them in the queue or whether it was IT um, but basically, once you see that, it's kind of like, okay, well, someone thought it was at least suspicious enough to forward it on. Um, you know, we might stop. We might not get as many clicks as we want. Or sometimes they'll open it on their phone, and it won't load correctly. Or they, they won't think it's loading correctly, and then they'll open it on their desktop system, which is kind of an issue because the more systems they load the page on, that's just increasing the attack surface for us. So that's, that's great for us. Okay, so um, unfortunately, the... SMTP, the sending of it um, over the network wasn't working this morning. So this is a previous email that I sent to myself um, from home. So this is basically the email, sent to Gmail. Uh, you can click on the link. And maybe it'll load. Oh no. Uh, Okay, well, it's not loading. Great. Um, but it works, trust me. <laughs> Demo <laughs> fail. So, um, but basically what I was, what I was going to show there is um, it was going to take you to a page where you could submit credentials. Um, in the credentials tab, which is actually, I think, everyone's favorite tab, to actually see uh, who actually submitted credentials, tab. Um, you can go in, it sorts it out by the email address. Uh, the username and the password and when it was submitted. And you can enable, like, show password or not if you're going to take screenshots of it. Um, just really, really quick, if you wanted to enable any of those neat features that uh, we were talking about up here in preferences, um, the server, here's where you would enter your phone number, has all these carriers, here's the hook URL. So yeah, we basically already went over this, but um, another thing that's built into it is you can actually analyze the results. So this is actually a screenshot of um, a real campaign that we did. But you can see how it actually curves up really sharply at the very beginning and then levels off. So if we keep the server open for a week, you can actually see trending. And I mean, whether we send 500 or 10 emails, I mean, it really, the curve is all the same. So it helps you do analytics on it. We can send the emails off hours as well and start to see when the clicks start coming in. That'll help us profile when the sort of start of business day is for our client. So overall, key points to notice, um, Kingfisher actually lets you see visitor details. So the user agent, what they're running, what IP address it came from, um, if they're running out of date software, like Spencer is talking about unauthorized devices on the network, um, and also it helps you kind of lock down if users are forwarding emails, if they are, and if you don't want them to forward it, you can do the 404 um, deny. Also with the passwords and credential harvesting, you can see um, if a whole bunch of passwords come in, okay, well this is the password schema, they obviously don't have complexity. And yeah, um, we are out of time. So that's it. Um, this is the GitHub page, or you can just search GitHub for Secure State, and Kingfisher's on there. Um, Twitter handles, questions, Yes. Um, we have a we did a social engineering. We mm -hmm. hired a third party. Okay. And we had this question pop up, and 
we had a big debate with them where other at Wayne. We had people actually take the email that they sent to them and they were afraid to open it, so they forwarded it to their phone, their email on their phone, and opened it from there so it logged. And we, we, we as a company said, hey, they were afraid to open it internally. They sent it to their home email. That shouldn't count against us, but kind of lost the battle. But what's your thought on that? Will you run across that? Um, well, there was that Android browser exploit that came out fairly recently. So, I mean, shell is shell, and it's going to depend on what they're using on their phone. They still have corporate resources. But it was a corporate email. I mean, it depends on how how you want to interpret it. Right. I mean, I guess you look at it two ways. I mean, it depends on. I guess if there's a corporate policy set up that prevents corporate emails from being sent to private personal emails. That also like sounds that. like data loss. Uh, yeah. Um, like it, you could be sending out I mean, confidential I guess, information. Realistically, or I guess the other side of the coin would be, okay, yeah, technically they didn't open the email on um, the company's web, or on company asset, whatever. Um, if they did get shell, yeah, shell is shell, but I guess it wasn't on the company's laptop. so. Maybe factor that in. Um, I guess it really depends on point of contact and the company whether they want to see that as a valid fish or not. Pretty much every client I've ever worked with, the policy is if you think it is suspicious, forward it on to the security department. And so, strictly speaking, they failed that because that's not what they did. But I mean, it's really up to how you'd want to interpret it. That's how I would interpret it is you're not yeah. following policy. Because that's a lot of what phishing is. We want to make sure that not only are the users aware, but that they're following the internal policies. Because if that is an incident, but they forward it on and they don't realize it, the company is still under attack. And chances are very low that it was only the one email sent to one user. So that could slip under the radar if they don't say anything. Um, OK, so that's it. Um, if anyone else has any other questions, we'll be around. Feel free to stop. And I'll ask. be back on again at 1 upstairs talking about bypassing Emmett. So if you want to come see me again. Cool. Thank Thanks. You.